I began my life, well, my Christian life, in a Methodist church. Actually, I did begin life in a Methodist church, having been born into a family that attended a Methodist church. When I grew up, we were always talking about revival. Not the whole church, but just some of us who were influenced by the charismatic renewal. <clears throat> revival was this ideal state that we sought, a time when multitudes would come to God, would come to salvation, would flock into the church. There was never any real definition of what revival meant, but we sought it. In my mind, and I was uh, probably a preteen to early teen at that time, revival in my mind meant having drums and a bass, bass guitar actually, drums and bass in church, that would be revival. Wow, that'd be something. Eventually, we did come into the charismatic renewal. And we did have the drums and bass. And it was really something. And I thought that I'd found what I was looking for. It was explosive. In a good way, also in a bad way. The charismatic section of the church tend to be marked with some pretty scandalous scandals. Well, some scandals are not so scandalous, but some scandals are more scandalous. In the charismatic church, it was a lot of sexual scandals, and those are Scandalous, salacious. Anyway, that's just one of them. Other than that, you find a lot of abuse of power. You'll find many cults spring out from the charismatic section of the church. But that could also be, simply be because the charismatic section of the church is the fastest section, fastest growing sector of the church in the 20th century and on into the 21st century. So why shouldn't the most cancers start where the growth is happening the fastest? I think that's just pretty normal. Whatever the cause, many scandals, many cults came out of the charismatic section of the church. In a way, maybe because it's just only that part of the church that's really growing. <laughs> but anywho, so I thought I'd arrived, right, with my drums and bass and whatnot. But through all the scandals, I realized that I kind of reached somewhat of a dead end. Had enough of all that nonsense. Did some soul searching, ended up in a... Lutheran Church. Now, I've already gone on for like four minutes and I don't want to get into too much detail here. Probably do it in another video about how I ended up in a Lutheran Church. When I did end up in the Lutheran Church and did more soul searching, some contemplating and a bit of reflective thought, I realized that the charismatic tradition came out of the Pentecostal tradition, which came out of the Methodist Wesleyan tradition. So from the Methodist church and through all that charismatic 
upheaval. I thought I'd gone through a lot and gone far from my roots, but found out that I was actually just moving along one branch of the church. And these branches go back in history, like off the screen, to a common source way, way back there. And then the branches continue. When I joined the Lutheran Church, then I realized that what I had thought was very different in my Pentecostal charismatic tradition from my early Methodist ways were largely forms and appearances, the form of music, the style of preaching, the jargon that was used, but it was still along the same tradition. The church is full of diversity, much growth and evolution over the course of time. Hello, Anne.